2020 Ford Expedition Review, Still Fighting. But before we start, please support us by pressing the like and subscribe buttons, so that we can continue to provide information about car and motorcycle news. Also turn on the bell button to get the latest updates. Your support means a lot to us. Thank you. The auto industry is little more than a fist fight, with every brand trying to knock out its rivals. Rather than throwing haymakers, though, these companies launch newer, smarter, more dynamic products. And with every blow that lands, you can be sure the competition is winding up for its own counterattack. That's where we join Ford and Chevrolet. After the Blue Oval launched its well-received and long-overdue reinvention of the three-row Ford Expedition in 2018, it enjoyed a few years with a staggered Chevrolet. Late last year, though, the new Tahoe and Suburban SUVs arrived, and with them, advanced technology and far better driving dynamics. While Chevy has landed a hammer blow against Ford, Dearborn is ready to strike back with a facelifted Expedition. But a week behind the wheel shows that the current model is still a decent example of the truck-based, three-row breed. The roomy cabin, fair price, and twin turbocharged powertrain make it a good choice, age be damned. The Expedition won't see a redesign for a few years, so the next update will be a facelift that's likely to riff on the current model's clean, but bland, exterior. That's mostly okay. As vehicle designs go, there's little to offend here. The Expedition neatly merges the F-150's chiseled styling, it shares its basic platform and aluminum construction with the popular pickup, with the smoother lines of Ford's crossover range. That means C-clamp-shaped running lights flanking a rectangular, cheese grater-style grille in front, while the taillights are the apparent offspring of an F-Series and an Explorer. In profile, crossover lines dominate the aluminum body, with a conventional belt line and none of the chamfering found around the F-150's greenhouse. The equipped black accent packages gloss black wheels and black elements in the fascia do little for the Expedition's look. The interior design feels particularly antiquated, especially with a redesigned F-150 hitting the market. The steering wheel design, switch gear, and the overall layout of the controls on the dash is solidly last-generation Ford, while the collection of plastics features shapes that look robust but also deeply uninteresting. The Expedition's cabin benefits from some fun detailing on King Ranch, Limited, and Platinum trims, but our Everyman XLT model, with its simple stitching and dull silver accents, is a textbook case of function over form. Even years after it debuted and despite the arrival of newer competition, the Expedition still has the roomiest third-row seat bench on the market, offering 36.1 inches of legroom, more than you'll find in the back of most compact sedans. Pair that with excellent headroom and solid shoulder space, and the Expedition's last row really could play host to a couple of adults on a short jaunt. That's doubly true when you slide the second row forward, expanding total leg space to an epic 40.9 inches. Room in the rest of the Expedition is similarly adequate. The second row is a fine place to while away a day on the road, especially with the available and highly recommended captain's chairs. Pass on the seven-seat layout and the second row features 40-20-40 split seating with a reclining back, so it's still plenty comfy. Legroom sits at 41.5 inches, which is just half an inch behind the newer Chevy Tahoe. But let's talk about the front seats, which is where our issues lie. The chairs themselves are flat and rather uncomfortable. It feels like the big Expedition's front buckets came from a smaller product. They're oddly constricting without feeling supportive. The front row is rather tight, too, with a small pedal box that reminds us of past Ford crossovers, like the Flex and Explorer. And in general, our Expedition XLT tester's faux leather upholstery feels cheap and plasticky, it's the best reason to step up to the limited. Despite its age, the Expedition exhibits a solid handle on tire and wind noise, while the ride is passable when you consider the truck-based routes. That said, the introduction of the new Tahoe should leave Ford worried. Any customer that's experienced the sophisticated air springs and magnetic dampers in the range-topping Chevy will find the Ford's grasp of body motions, especially over small bumps, disappointing. The Expedition isn't nearly so isolated, with secondary body motions following bumps that the air-sprung Tahoe would shrug right off. The good news for the Ford is that it's far closer in ride quality to non-air suspended Chevys, which make up the bulk of Tahoe slash Suburban sales.
Thanks for watching. Drop a like, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.